Welcome to Miller Strategy Battle Gamers and another Carolina Miller of Hopping League Adventure. My name is Jason. Today I'm going to be starting the first part of my uh, March in Music City tournament vlog. Um, for those who don't know, the March in Music City is a two-day tournament in Nashville, Tennessee, hosted by Mr. Evan Acosta. It is a one, first of its kind tournament. There is a 1,000 point limit for fist submissions, which is the first in ASBGA history. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, they have put a 100 model limit cap on, so no real hordes. So you can get a horde, but you're only going to get 100 models. Um, there's going to be four rounds, two days, uh, the 8th and 9th, three rounds on Saturday, one round on Sunday, with the uh, awards being done afterwards. Two and a half hour rounds, and the scenarios are going to be drawn on the day of. So kind of like Fords 2 back in July, where we didn't know what three scenarios we were going to be getting ourselves into until we arrived that day. So we have an idea. There are six that have been picked out, but they're going to be random. They're going to be drawn as we go. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to flash over to my uh, army list that I've already submitted, and I'm locked in with it, so there's no changes, but I'm confident and I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, here you go, guys. Okay, guys, so here it is, my army for March on Music City. It is... Once again, the fiefdoms, primarily Dolan and Roth, of course. So I've, uh, you know, I've taken these to Fords too, and I've taken them to Nova. If you watch those vlogs, um, I've really grown to like these guys, and I've done really well with them. I've done pretty poorly at times too, but uh, I, I, I'm really looking forward to bringing these guys out for this tournament, and I think they're going to do good. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Let's break down. So in Warband Number One, we have. Uh, Prince Emmer Hill of Dolan Roth. Let's see if we take that light off. Nope, a little better with the light on. Eh, don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you guys have to tell me later. Um, that's Prince Emmer Hill of Dolan Roth, obviously, on his armored horse with lance. He's leading three uh, knights of Dolan Roth on armored horse with lance, four foot knights, three men at arms with pike. And then four Blackroot Veil archers armed with spear. I'm again using the, um, I believe these are the war Rangers of the North. Yes, Rangers of the North for proxy. That way I can tell the difference between my warriors, my Blackroot Veil archers with spear and without. So I have a couple in here that have spear and I have some without spear. So I'm just using the ones, the, war the Rangers of the North to know the difference. I actually have some Rangers of Middle Earth painted up and you'll see these here next. Uh, Warband number two is four along the fat on horse again. Um, and as always, you guys know, uh, mounted, dismounted. Um, two uh, knights of Dolan Roth, armored horse and lance. Five foot knights, three men at arms, and then four black root veil archers. And these are the ones without spear, and as you can tell, those are just rangers in Middle Earth. So then back over to our next one, we have Dune here leading. The same complement of two mounted uh, knights of Dolan Roth with armor horse and spear, or armor horse and lance, my apologies. Five foot knights, three men at arms, and then three uh, rangers of the north, but they're black root veil archers, and these guys have spears as well, that's why I use them. And then last but not least, the captain of Dolan Roth with armor horse and lance as well, with two. Uh, Knights of Minas, Knights of <laughs> Dolan Roth, not Knights of Minas Tirith, wow. Knights of Dolan Roth on armored horse with lances. Four foot knights, three men at arms, and three black root veil archers. These guys do not have the spears. So that is my 1,000 point list, and I've practiced um, with a few different combinations, and I found that this one is probably the best. So I'm looking to maximize it and hope it does really well. So yeah, guys, uh, next time I'll come back, I'll probably be at the hotel. Uh, after check-in, hopefully day of, they are doing a special, um, I can't think of the name, uh, Siege of Minas Tirith from the movies with the, uh, uh, shoot, I can't, the Minas Tirith wall, something like that. It's a, it's, it's a cool scenario. It's a special scenario. Uh, so I might take some video, might not. Uh, otherwise, I'll let you guys know, and uh, I'll be back and let you know how the tournament went and how the rounds go. Look forward to it. Hey guys, so I'm here in Nashville and whew, it's been a long day. So we just concluded uh, day one of this two-part event. Uh, we had three rounds officially for the tournament and one round that was a uh, 
I guess you could call it like a campaign game. It was just a nice little fun siege. We start off the day early with a siege of Minas Tirith, Minas Tirith um, event. It was just a few different areas, a couple different objectives. You just got placed in charge of either defending the city or uh, sieging the city like from the Return of the King movie. Um, I did end up winning my uh, protection of the, the gate. So unlike in the movies, I protected the gate. So... Uh, that was fun, uh, but going into what we're all really looking forward to, so round one, I played against Mr. John Billy, and it was um, Lords of Battle. So, Lords of Battle, I like that game. Unfortunately, the list I was playing against, not good, not good scenario. So, Mr. Billy took five Eagles, Bayorn, and Radagast on a Great Eagle. Yeah. So, seven models, yes, yeah, seven models. And for Lords of Battle, yeah. So I tried shooting, <laughs> using my shooting combo with my Black Root Veil Archers and, and Dune here. And out of 30 shots, including a few re-rolls, um, I only got three total wounds. And I didn't even kill the Eagle. The one Eagle that I put them all on, I got two on the first turn. And I'm like, yes, yes, I can get one. If I can just take out one of these Eagles, I can make it close. I, I might be able to do this. Yeah, he channeled Renew. Yep. Got all his, all his, well, all his uh, wounds back. So he was back to full health. Uh, but that was at least three wounds for me. Um, uh, the highlight for that game was the fact that I was able to kill Bayorn, Radagast was his leader, and one other eagle. So if I had gotten one more and I had one eagle on two wounds, I might have been able to do it. So maybe an extra turn, I might have been able to do it. But we ran out of time, unfortunately. Um, I was well broken, and we just didn't keep ending so unfortunately it was a 10 to 2 victory for him he got 45 wounds against my army including the death of dune here which gave him three uh right there and then all my other heroes stayed alive ember hill was actually probably my man of the match he walked up to bayorn and in two turns was able to kill him with some charges and some well-placed lances with support got a couple points of might back from that and the fact that he also killed um Radagast. Not only did I kill Radagast, but I also killed Radagast Eagle, which gave me some points. But it was a 45 to 21 wound tally wise, and I did kill his leader, so that gave me two VPs. But he broke me, was unbroken, and had twice as many, so he had 10. So 10 to 2 major loss, which kind of hurt. Uh, round two was against Brandon. Um, not sure, don't know his last name. Sorry. Uh, my, yeah, it's got to be Acosta. Brandon Acosta, because it's Evan Acosta, who's our TO. He's his brother. So. Probably a cost of. Anyway, uh, interesting list. Brandon, unfortunately, is just getting back into the game, so he's not very familiar with the game still. And he had um, a 1,000 point list of Nazgul. Yeah, unnamed Nazgul with different might, will, and fate, and then a couple banners to help out, I guess, when they got stuck in contact, combat. Um, it was actually uh, Evan's army, and he was trying it out, I guess, to tr play it. Uh, Might have been better unfortunately the scenario was contest of champions so if you don't know what contest of champions is you put your heroes three inches away from each other pretty much in the center of the board and then they have to fight it's lords of battle but for your leader so your leader's wounds are what you're tracking so he had the nine nazgul and in turn one i ran in with ember hill and killed the witch king very easily <laughs> uh, that lance definitely helped out there um, killed the Witch King, had some support with that, and then went around and killed four of the race, and the game ended when I broke him. Um, I think it's, yeah, broke him. And I got a 12 to nothing victory for that, for breaking, for having three times the amount of kills than his leader, because I just, I killed three guys with Ember Hill, and three guys is three times how much you need. Um, broke him, killed his leader, yeah, it, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, it was over pretty quickly, unfortunately. I, I kind of feel bad about it because he's new. I was trying to help him out best I could. I was telling him, like, yeah, yeah, you got to do this here to help try and take this hero out of it. And you got to try, oh, you know what, go ahead, go black dart this guy because why not? He's my cavalry guy. And throw three will at it. And if you black dart, you kill a 20 point cavalry model. He actually did pretty good. He, he killed like six of my nine cavalry models with black darts and a couple other guys. But unfortunately, when he came to trying to target my heroes, I had enough will between the three of them. That he was targeting between Forlong, Immer Hill, and the Knight of Dolan Roth captain, that I resisted anything. And then, yeah, it was over pretty quickly. 
Um, third game was fun. I played against uh, David. I don't know David's last name either. I'm sorry. Uh, but he had an Urukai Force with uh, Vrasku, um, Sharku on a Warg, uh, Lurts, Saruman, and a Troll. Yeah, a Troll. Must be a thing, because Alex, if you're watching this, yeah, you're a Troll. Um, fortunately, he misplayed the Troll a little bit. He kind of had him on one side of the board. It, it was Domination. Um, and he deployed Gr Grima, of course. He had Grima, too. Deployed Grima over, and Grima killed me for might. But I was trying to set it up so that I could maybe go and get um, uh, Saruman. And I was setting myself up every turn to try and get to him. I was doing heroic combats um, with my heroes on one flank with all my knights and just moving myself quickly. And it, he must not have... He probably misjudging it, but I moved from... The back side, because he came in and flanked me in this kind of pattern in an L. And I had Ember Hill and my Dolan Wrath Captain. And with two heroic combats, I got to the top. And then I was within striking distance of Saruman. Saruman. Um, but unfortunately, I lost the priority roll. So I had to... No, I, I would win the priority roll or use a heroic to do something to move first. And he would use a heroic with Saruman. And he would run Saruman away. And every time I would get close, he would just run him away again. And it'd be like, dang it. Because uh, Domination is one of those hard ones to get a lot of VPs unless you can get all five objectives. And for this game, I won 5-2. Um, to two. I had one objective, was contesting two others. And I broke him, but was unbroken. Um, the troll did not get into combat early enough, unfortunately. He didn't get in until the very end of the game, the last few rounds. And between Emberhill, Forlong, and my Dolimroth captain, I, I was just slaughtering guys left and right. He had uh, Sharku and I think six Warg Riders. Yes, yeah, six Warg Riders. And then just only two Berserkers and then a bunch of uh, three Orkai with crossbows. Six of them, I want to say, with the or with the Urukai bow. The scouts with the Urukai bow. Um, did not go so well with me shooting that game. Um, my shooting combo, I didn't use it at all because Grima was sitting right there and I would have gotten to do it once. So uh, I was just shooting strength 2 bows anyway. So I shot them at his defense 4 Urukai scouts and actually got 5 kills. No, I got 2 kills on his Urukai scouts and then I shot his front rank at defense 6 guys and was able to get 3 kills. Which was pretty impressive out of 10 shots because uh, he picked off 5 of my archers in 2 turns. Um, but then from that, on, that point on it was just a fighting game. And uh, even though we had the fight values for the most part, I had Imrahil in a prime position so that his 3-inch effect for plus 1 fight value was taking massive effect. And I was winning. I, I won the middle handily. It took three, four turns of combat, but I wiped out, I think, uh, got 36 kills. And I think uh, 28 of those were from the middle of section, just from those three heroes and my uh, being right there and all those hard-hitting guys and my uh, knights getting the charge off with the lances, um, even when I couldn't. So he would move Saruman out of the way, like I said, and when he moved Saruman out of the range of my guys on Cal on, on Mount ba on Calvary, ugh. God, I'm tired, I'm sorry, um, I just would charge the back of his line. So I literally had his line enveloped and... Yeah, I was getting lance bonuses and everything. So even defense six Orakai were falling like flies because four dice to get a five, you know, or or pikemen four dice to get a four. It, it was it was nice. <laughs> it was nice to see that for once <laughs> it, it worked the way it was supposed to. Um, I feel bad because uh, he told me about where he got his army from from a dear friend of his. So I feel bad for killing it. I'm sorry, David, if you're watching. Um, it was a good game, though. Uh, you're a good sport. I really appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, that was the end of day one. Going on to day two tomorrow. Um, one last game. Uh, they took it down from five rounds to three to four. So I'll have one game at 10 o'clock in the morning. Currently, I sit with two major victories and a major loss, which uh, actually puts me good enough to be in, I believe, third place right now. Uh, Mr. John Beely, who beat me is in first right now with three major victories um 
I don't know if I'll play him again or if they'll do it where they match first and second. Uh, they're doing it a little different. Uh, our scenarios each turn are random and we roll to figure out which one we're doing. So it's kind of interesting. So we'll see. I'm not real sure where I'm going to get tomorrow. Um, but yeah, guys, a lot of fun. Uh, stay tuned. You know, you'll, you'll just be waiting a few seconds here as soon as I sign off. But for me, <laughs> it'll be a whole night, which I uh, sorely need to sleep. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play that game tomorrow. And then I'll probably wait till I get back home to Charlotte to shoot the last bit. So the next time you see me, I'll probably be at home. Because unfortunately, if you're paying attention to the weather... Well, at this current time, uh, the NC mountains are getting hammered with snow, and i got to drive through them tomorrow. So I'm probably actually going to go south to Georgia and then come back up to North Carolina, which is going to turn my six-hour drive into close to eight and a half. Um, so, yeah, I may not even shoot this until Monday morning. Uh, but, yeah, guys, uh, great day today. Thanks to my opponents. Uh, I look forward to tomorrow. And uh, stay tuned in about 20 seconds here when I sign off, and you get to watch the next part. Hey guys, so I'm back, and good news, I made it home safely from the snow, even though everybody was freaking out over it. It wasn't even that big a deal. <laughs> um, so here I am from my, my final entry in the March on Music City vlog. Uh, my final game on day two was a, uh, what did we play? Uh, I played against Mr. Austin Featherstone in Seize the Prize. Uh, that's where the there's an artifact that is buried dead center of the board. You deploy 12 inches from the side, and then you got to try and... Uh, sorry about that, something on the screen. I had to try and get up to the middle and uncover it and then march it off the opposite side. So kind of like Reconnoiter, just with actual actually trying to get a prize. Um, so he was playing Army of the Dead, led by King Elisar um, on foot. We talked about it. I told him you should mount him. I said, King Elisar is great, but you definitely got to mount him and get that extra killing power. He said, cool. He might do it when we play uh, next month in Atlanta because um, he's from the Atlanta group, and they're hosting a tournament next month in January. Um, anyway, back to the game. So it ended up being a draw, and I'll go through it real quick, and it's actually really interesting. <laughs> so we deployed you know, as far forward as we could. Um, he had the King of the Dead and King LSR, of course, and then a few uh, Army of the Dead mounted warriors i'm not sure what they're called uh cavalry i guess i think he had three or four and then just the rest uh on foot with spear and shield and you know hand weapon and shield um he did a march with king elisar's free point on the first turn i did not counter thinking hey you know I, i've done this before i've let somebody march and get the objective and then i've been able to swarm him because i out modeled him 53 to 42 i had enough models where i was like i can i can get around him i can swarm him and I can uh, get him from the backside and take out the person who has a jewel. So we did that. Uh, I didn't counter, like I said. Unfortunately, that was my own fault. I forgot that Warriors of the Dead are very hard to kill at defense 8. And my strength 3 Warriors need 6 by 4s. Yeah, not, not so good. Um, I did get a very cheeky uh, victory point right there in turn 1. He marched his line up with King Elisar about 2 deep. Unfortunately, the way he positioned Elisar was so I had a perfect line of sight with all 14 of my arch or sorry 12 of my archers and Dune here. So I called a heroic shot in order to reroll fail runes with uh, the Black Root Veil Archer's ability and since they did not move that turn and they were within six inches of Dune here, I rerolled ones. So with 14 guys I got 12 hits off um, and ended up getting three wounds. No sorry four wounds on LSR which I was like yeah, so he's going to get at least one, uh, I got one VP right there just because I wounded him. Um, he did fade out of three of them, but I did put one wound on him, and I was like, sweet, I got King LSR down to two wounds and no fate, and no fate. yeah, I'll be able to kill him real easy. Yeah, it didn't turn out that way. It then proceeded to be a slugging match of kicking each other in the shins with my defense six front guys, because uh, even though they were wounding on Courage, his dice were just not being kind to him. My courage, uh, five knights. Sorry, courage, four knights were just standing up to his warriors, and they were like, "Yo, you need fives? Yeah, you're not gonna get it." So <laughs> unfortunately, we were doing a little bit of killing, but not as much as I wanted. Um, unfortunately, priority rolls all went a lot in his favor. So the biggest thing I could do was try and get my knights in there to charge with the lance bonus to get some kills. And when I did get my charges off and was able to win 
um, against him because all he needs is six to fight three guys because uh, uh, Warriors of the Dead to fight three guys, then, yeah, you, you win. Um, so when my guys did charge, and I'll get to that in a second, I was getting kills. Unfortunately, getting the charge was hard. A, because I wasn't getting priority well. I didn't want to blow all my might. And B, because terror. It hurt my army this game. Even with Furlong's Warhorn, unfortunately, the King of the Dead having Harboring of Evil with the pure bonus made it so that my my Warhorn was moot. So I needed six ups to be able to charge just with my knights. And there was a couple times that I had to charge with my men at arms and their strength, and they're only courage three. So I needed seven ups, and uh, it, it was bad. Um, basically, my Black Root Veil archers, after shooting um, and wounding LSR, did absolutely nothing. The rest of the game, absolutely nothing. They failed a multitude of times to get into combats. I actually got three or four in in one turn out of eight. <laughs> I had courage too, it hurts. Um, I was actually really impressed when I got three in a row. I was like, oh my gosh, they're actually getting in there. And then proceeded to fail with like the next five or six. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's about right. Um, so uh, basically we ended up fighting right in the middle spot. And it, it was just battle lines kicking each other. Uh, he would feed, I would feed LSR a guy, he would feed Immerhill a guy, and that's literally how it was. Uh, my man of the match was definitely Forlong, and the reason being is, like I said, I thought I was going to be able to get around the backside and, you know, surround him, but without being able to get, I was failing at least one out of every three times I was trying to charge with terror checks, and that was hurting my chances. So I ended up taking Forlong and a knight and a couple foot knights around the right flank, and he ended up getting the artifact, and I... Very last turn of the game, it came down to one turn of the game. He had the artifact. He did not have it on my side of the board. So at that point, it would have been, it was the last turn, like I said, three to one victory to him. I made a couple plays. I was like, okay, he's close to being broken. I'm in range to get LSR, and I may be able to kill the ring bearer. So if I killed the ring bearer, he dropped the jewel, which would take away his VPs. So I charged in with Emmerhill against one guy. I actually charged into, uh, in, into oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I charged into... Uh, LSR and wrapped into a ghost and then used a couple guys on foot to charge an LSR. Unfortunately, I had to use my last point of might to call it, or I had to use my point of might to call a heroic combat because I wanted to make sure that I had the extra dice against LSR on the charge and not get let him, you know, support him. So I wanted to make sure I killed his support so it would be his, just his three dice. So when I killed the support, it was pretty easy to wrap into LSR. So I had six dice in the fight because I had a men at arms and a support and, El and uh, Ember Hill against him. So I had six dice, he had three, and we threw down, and we both threw sixes. And I'm like, right, here you go, roll off. If I win this roll off, I'm going to kill LSR. As great as he is, you know, eight dice needing fives, and I only need two of them. And I had a point of might still at that point. I was like, I just need one. I need a five and then a four. Threw the roll off. He threw it because it was his priority. He got the roll off. And then proceeded to do three, uh, two wounds to Immerhill, who failed two of his three fate and gave him a VP. And I was like, oh, well, there goes play number one. So instead of it being <laughs> at that point a two to three to for him, it ended up being a four to three, four to one for him. Because he had the jewel at that point, and he in, in, uh, wounded my leader. So I was like, okay, I still got some plays left. I need to kill like four guys in order to break them. So go into one combat with one guy. I got like six guys in this one. He shields, gets a six. I was like, okay, I can win this if I get a six. Throw five dice, four high. Well, I got a banner. Three. Come on, man. I ended up killing three of the four guys I needed in order to break him. I need he had 42, I believe, so you need 22 to break. I killed 21. I was like, oh. so there goes play number two. Down the two. Last play, four long. I ended up charging four long in on the jewel bear. It was four long, outnumbered by six. My three dice against six. I had zero might. I had to roll a natural six, and I was outside of the 12-inch range for a banner roll. I was like, oh gosh. Oh gosh, this is going to hurt. Threw my three dice. Got my six. I was like, yes. Yes. And I probably should have played it a little smarter here and tried to kill the jewel bear and then kill the extra guys so that I could get um, 
the break because you know I knocked down four guys because he had a couple supports, and with six, you know, three double strikes giving six, I could have possibly killed him on a five and then got someone else on a five. But I was like, you know what? The way I've been rolling, I just put everything on one roll on the on the art of the jewel carer. I got one five, and the rest were ones and twos. I was like, I've rolled the six dice and I saw. All ones and twos, and I'm like, no, no, no. And then I saw the one five. I was like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so that was the end of the game. It was a one-one draw. Yep, big VP guys here. One wound for one for wounding him, his leader. One for wounding my leader. Um, so yeah, that actually hurt us both because uh, this is the first time uh, Mr. Evan Acosta's done a tournament. I know he's getting back into the game, so they did their scoring a little differently. It wasn't no TPs. It was just straight up wins laws draws and uh victory points so i ended up having two victories one loss and one draw and if i had won that game i would have placed second unfortunately because it was a draw it dropped me down to fourth um but hey no, no big deal you know i had fun it was great i met a lot of new guys uh, actually i met everybody new i knew nobody there so it was great to meet all these folks um the bright side though i did get to take home one reward i got best themed army as voted by my peers so thanks guys, I appreciate that for the votes of confidence because um, I think my painting is pretty bad. And I didn't really think I themed it, I just took five times because I like them. Um, but yeah, I, I got that and I also got some uh, mold kits. Um, so when you guys come for, uh, hopefully I get to see some of y'all who are watching, when y'all come for, for uh, Ringo South 3 coming up in June, I believe is what it's going to be this year, a uh, little week here I think. Because I don't think we've set the date officially, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be in June. Um, so mark your calendars tentatively. And I believe it's the middle of June. Uh, so I'll have a couple of those mold, hopefully some molded rocks made up. So you guys get to enjoy that and a few of our good boards. Um, but other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Um, as always, please support your hobby. hobby. I guess it's no longer hobby. Hop, support your Middle Earth strategy battle game hobby. Yeah. Uh, support, support your local game store. You know, all that stuff. And I look forward to seeing y'all in the future. Take care.